In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a student election flyer like this in Photoshop. And this is coming up. Hi everybody, you know Sent here. Welcome to the channel. Over here, we make videos like this. If that is something that sounds like you're interested, kindly consider subscribing. Inside the description will be a link to download the resources that I'll be using for this particular video. You can download it and practice and if you are done and you want to share it with me or you want to send it for review, you can hit me up on Instagram or on Twitter. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so I'll be doing this in Photoshop 2021 and you can do this in any version that you have. First things first, we're going to create a new document so you hit Ctrl plus N and then you can create a new document. Depending on the size that you are going for, since this is a tutorial, let me go for a 4x4 inches. But you can also apply this to any size, especially if you want to print it. So 4x4 inches for me would work better. And then I'll go ahead and click create. Now this tutorial is going to be a very simple one. The first thing we are going to bring in is the image. So luckily for me for this project, the image was already touched up so I didn't need to do much. So instead of bringing the image right on, on here, because you're going to take the background, we want to open it in another document. So you press Ctrl plus O or you can go to file and then open so that you can open your image in a separate document and not onto this one. So we go ahead and then we double click on that and then it is going to open. So you realize that we have our main work or our main document, our main canvas, and then we have another one. Now, once we're here, we're going to click on this icon over here. That is the lock sign to unlock it. And then we are going to remove the background. Now, a simple way to remove the background is to use the inbuilt AI to that Photoshop has provided. Now, to do that, you go to window and then you go to properties. So your properties is going to open up for you. And then you are going to click on this quick actions over here. So this is a pattern or a pattern for removing background that has been created and incorporated into Photoshop. Now we're going to click on remove background and in a space of second, you can see the magic that this is going to create. Now this is what you have. Can you just believe it? Now, if you want to learn more about this, I made a video explaining thoroughly how you can use this to remove backgrounds. But of course, if you have complex backgrounds, you may have to resort to either the pen tool or the polygonal axle tool and I have videos on that as well. Now, as we have our image removed, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to move this into our main canvas. To do that, you're going for your move tool and then you can drag your image from this canvas onto the main one. So you can leave it right over here. Now, because this canvas is quite small, it is going to be bigger and I'm going to turn this one off. You press Ctrl T and then transform your image to the size that you want. So I want my image around this side. Now, like I said earlier, this image has already been retouched. So I just needed to touch it up with a little bit of camera roll. Now to do that, I'm going to select my image and then I'll go to filter and then I'm going to select the camera roll filter. Once this opens for me, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can zoom in a little bit like that. And the first thing I'm going to work on over here is the basics. So I go to the basics so we can apply a little bit of clarity and dehaze and texture on this one as well. Let me zoom in some more. So let me zoom in to about 200 so that you can see the effect. So I'm going to apply some clarity on this one. I'm going to make sure that the image is clear enough. So you can just play around with this. Okay, so, so 10 for this one would work. And then I'm going to reduce the texture also. So I'm going to drag the texture to about minus nine. Now I'm done with the basics over here. So let's go to the detail. So for the detail, I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening to it so that face doesn't actually look like a very small boy. So after I set the sharpening a little bit, I'm going to also open the noise reduction so that the face is going to be more smooth like this. And then I can increase the sharpening some more to bring out the effect on the eyebrow and that of the beard. So you just basically have to play around. Now this doesn't have to be the same or the same settings as mine because you're going to have two different images so you just need to play around your image and if you find the one that you want that'll be fine from there i'm going to add a bit of color grading to it and also like i said that is going to depend entirely on you how you actually want your image to look like so i just wanted to add a little bit of reddish to it
all right so i think this is going to be okay for me a little bit at least when you have free time you can just play around with all the color tones the mid tones the shadows and the highlights any one of them that you want and after you've gotten the better way let's assume that this is the better option that i went for after you've gotten everything that you want you can then go ahead and click ok so now i'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the slight difference that i made over here so when i undo this this is the original image this is how it looked like and then this is going to be the the one that has been touched up with the camera raw filters so you can take a lot of time to make something more better with this one now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple rectangle so we go for the rectangle tool and then we can create a rectangle over here now you can choose any color for your rectangle but i decided to go for red and i picked the red from the attire over here so i'm going to press ctrl t to transform it slightly like that we are going to make one more duplicate of this ctrl j to do that you press ctrl t and then you can transform it to the top side a little and then you can push it up and separate it from the main rectangle that we just created so something like this is what we are looking for so now i can zoom in you hit z and then you can zoom in or you can use Control plus plus and plus minus to zoom in and out and then i can close this up a little bit like that from there i make one more duplicate so Control j to make one more duplicate and then i can drag it down like that zoom in again now the reason why i zoom in before i transform it is because you are able to get exactly what you want okay so if i zoom in like this you can see that i can easily close it up like that now this rectangle is too long because you're going to put some information over here so let's select that rectangle rectangle one press ctrl t and then we can hold shift and close it up a little like this afterwards we can also drag this rectangle one copied and then place it a little bit down like that now it is time to add the test so on top of this one we're going to add a test to it so this flyer is actually a declaration of intent it's not the main flyer or the main poster election poster but this is just the declaration of intent so we are going to pick the test tool and i'm going for my favorite poppins i hold shift and then i can input the test over here so let me just select all of that and then i can decrease the test like this now at this point you're going to press ctrl t and then you just open it up and then you take your time to position it in the middle so this is going to be the declaration of intent that is the only thing that we are going to put over here and the intent or whatever the person writes is going to be here so for that we are going to select our test tool again and we are not going to use just a test like we did with the first one but we are going to create a test box because the test is a lot a little bit and then so we are going to create a test box like this you hold with the same test tool at this time around you hold and then you drag it like this so that it creates what is known as a test box for you now for this we are going to change it to not all caps so you go to the toggle character over here and then you can uncheck the all caps over here make sure it is not bold you can go for something like regular or medium anyone that you want you're also going to make sure that it is not opened up like this so you can do that by adjusting the leading so you can close it up a little four is fine and then we are going to make sure that it is left aligned now i've already copied the test so i'm just going to paste the test over here well the test is even more than i even expected so let me increase the font to about six or better still let me go for 5.5 and then i can open the leading to about six instead and we don't want to keep it like left aligned just like that so you go to the paragraph over here and then you are going to set it to justified left so this is how it is going to look like you can even drag this down to make sure that you don't have any test left behind and then you can take your time to position this in the middle like that so one thing that i made also is that you have to make some of these things stand out especially the hall of affiliation the name and some of these so what you can do is you can select the name for instance toggle character and then you can set this one to bold instead of all caps and you can even bold in it from here so we set this one to bold and then you can also do the same thing for the 
hall so that it stands out anybody that sees it will just know the name of the person and the hall of affiliation so we set this one to bold and then we can set this to all caps another thing you can also make it stand out is something like the vote for maximum impact that is the slogan so you can also bold in this one this one you don't need to make it all caps but you can bold in it so you select and then you bold in it and then you can keep doing this for all the text that stands out on this flyer so this is how it's going to look like after we've made those changes now for the last rectangle the test that we are going to put there is basically the slogan or the hashtag so we are going to select our test over here our, our test tool and then we are going to paste the test over here now we are going to choose poppings again i used basically one font for all of these okay and then we go for medium and you make sure that it is on top of this one so let me just select all of it and paste it again so vote for maximum impact like that and then you're going to take your time to position that also in the middle like this now let me go for my declaration of intent at the second rectangle over here and bring it down slightly as we want to add the name of the school and the logos to it so first things first let's bring the logos into it that is going to be on top of all of these so we go to file place embedded and then we can bring the logo so we are going to bring the first logo over here so you can take your time to transform it now you go to file again place embedded and it can bring the second logo so that is going to be the logo of the school you can zoom in from here z and then you zoom in and then you can take your time to position it over here now we just make sure that we open it up so that it is on the same line with the first one now the next thing is going to be the name of the school and the hall of affiliation so let me zoom in again and let me go for my test tool and we are going to just paste the test over here because i've already copied it now this time around i'm going to select it all and i'm going to change the color to black and you can also bold in this one and remember i'm keeping this left aligned over here and i'm going to select bold for this one as well now let me select the two logos over here press ctrl t and try to transform it and in between these two let's add just a rectangle to separate this so that it creates some contrast over there so you go for your rectangle too and then you can create a very small rectangle and that one too we can leave the color to be red now we are almost done with this flyer but let's touch it up with something small so for the declaration of intent we don't want it to stand alone and look so boring so let's touch it up a little so first off i'm going to select the declaration of intent i'm going to press ctrl t and then i'll transform it slightly from there i'm going to choose the ellipse tool and then i'm going to make one ellipse or circle like that i'll double click on the layer thumbnail and i'm going to change this color to white and click ok i can zoom in at this point press ctrl j to make a duplicate and drag it to the left side and then i'll press ctrl t and transform it choose my move to and make sure that this is brought back to the middle or the center with a little space to the first one that we made and then i'll make another duplicate drag it to the left side again press ctrl t and then i can transform it a little like that and also make sure that that is also brought in into the middle now after i have this i can select the three press ctrl e and then it is going to merge into one layer I press ctrl t and then i can transform this as a full layer slightly like that and then bring it in the middle from there i can make a duplicate by pressing ctrl j press ctrl t and then i can right click and flip this horizontal so it just turns out to the other side and then i can hold shift and drag it to the far end of the declaration of intent so i can bring it over here just like that we spice this up with something cute as this so you can just make sure that it is not too close to the d so give it a space like that now i didn't want to leave the background so empty and plain like this so i just decided to make something out of this attire to create a pattern at the background i've already made a video on how to create a pattern so you can check that video in the card above so to add a pattern maybe you don't want to go by that approach but you can use still use any pattern at all so to do that you go to the create new fill adjustment and then you choose your pattern over here and then you can choose the pattern that you want to use so this is the pattern that i use is attire to create and you can see that this is from his attire okay and then i can scale it down a little so that it is a bit smaller it doesn't look like that very big so a bit smaller like this 
and we don't want to leave it like that as well so so i'm going to scale this down a little bit like that i think 12 looks fine and i'll click ok and then i'm going to drop the opacity way below so somewhere around anywhere between 5 and 10 should be fine so i can even make this around six six percent is okay so let's make this around ten percent ten percent is fine and if you want to open the sizes too you can double click on the layer thumbnail and you can increase this to about 16 any size at all that you want and you click ok so that is going to serve as the background so the last thing we're going to add to this will be the name of the aspirant so for that you're going to use the ellipse tool or the circle to make one circle over here or one ellipse now we're going to change that color to black so we change this one to black and then we will make a duplicate by pressing ctrl g and then we are going to transform that circle also something like this okay for that particular copy we are going to change it back to red so you double click on this and then you are going to choose the color red so for our first ellipse you are going to drop the percentage to about 10 or 5 so we should have something like this so i just hit on 2 if you want to use the opacity over here you can use the opacity over here so I'm just basically going for 20% or even 10% if that is how you want it and then we are going to basically paste the name inside of this circle so you choose your test tool and then you hold shift and then you left click and then you can paste your test over here so you press ctrl T and then you can position it nicely according to how you want it so I don't want to leave this black black on red is a no no so you select your color or your color palette and then you can choose white for this and then you can click ok you can as well decide to center this if you want to do it what do you think between the left align and the center which one works best so we just need to reassign it i think the center works best for us and this is what you come up with if you follow the instructions very carefully now after i did this i just decided to add a little bit of gradient to wait to see how it's going to look like with gradient so to do that i'll go on the rectangle over here or if you want to be on the safer side just make sure that you group all of these ones so you select all of it press ctrl g and then you can group it to group one and then you can press ctrl j to make a duplicate okay and you are going to turn the group one off just for shaky reasons in case you make any mistakes you can go back to your group one okay so we are going to open the group that we just copied go to the rectangle right click and then you can choose blending options over here and then you are going to apply the gradient on it so this is the gradient that i applied on this in case you want to check the hex code this is the first one and this is the second one so you can click ok and then ok from here because i've already made it but if you want to choose your own you can go for any one of the gradients that you have in your photoshop okay so after this i'm going to click ok and then i can literally just copy this same gradient overlay onto all the other rectangles to make it easier for me i right click and then i go to copy layer style so i'll choose the rectangle that i want to paste it on and right click and then i'm going to paste layer style so you see that it reflects over here and then i can do the same thing for the one here so i'll select this rectangle right click and then i'm going to paste the layer style and then i can paste it on this ellipse as well so the first ellipse the one on top you right click and then you can paste the layer style and this is what we have as well and i noticed something from here you realize that when i applied this effect on it the image has kind of darkened a little bit i don't know how that is happening if anyone has an idea you can explain to me because if i turn this off and turn this on you can see that this image looks brighter and this image looks quite darker if you have a clue about what actually happened over here you can leave your comment in the comment section and also let me know between this and this which is your favorite that'll be it for this video i hope you gained value out of this video and i did this fly for my brother at the college of health and well-being at kintampo he shout outs to max billion at kintampo i'll be gaining value out of this video if you did subscribe to the channel will be so very much appreciated thanks for watching this video i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and bye